Well, hi everyone, this is Tom Slybig and Tommy Fox. Tommy's on the camera, and we're at the Plymouth Flea Market, and as you can see, they even had kitchen sinks down here. So if you're looking for just about anything, they have it down here at the Plymouth Flea Market. I noticed over there, there's a guitar, they got some parts for bicycles. Look at this old, oh, that's not a computer terminal, that's like a fish thing where you used to get micro, micro uh, film stuff and everything. And uh, so as you can see, there's a lot a lot of stuff and pan up we're right in front of the old uh, hotel and this is a real flea market ladies and gentlemen and so i'm with this gentleman that had the kitchen sinks and other stuff what's your name doug westcott how you doing doug pretty good to see you again i recognize you now yeah i've been around okay so uh man you had a lot of uh pretty neat things here we got this really uh, old time uh stove that's a stove okay yeah so, uh so is that will take it with you is that just an oven on the bottom no it's a, it's a stove it's electric yeah are those oh or are those gas no, burners gas. on top no it's a gas stove I, no i didn't From in the 40s or 50s. Where, where do the burners go in? Where do you? Where do you? You lift you up know? the uh, thing. Oh, you lift that top. The tops yeah. lift up. Hey. Well, that's cool. You don't even have to clean it. No. <laughs> <laughs> and back here we have a another you know, 50 stove. A, a 50 stove. Where do you get all this stuff? I clean everybody's backyards out and old ranches that they're tearing apart. Okay. And I uh, get rid of the stuff for them. Okay. I don't charge them. I just do the cleanup for them. Okay, makes sense one, to me. One house at a time in Jackson. Okay. Now, what is this gizmo back here? It has like a it electric motor on it. Yeah, uh, a thing for the laundry, and then they had a, a a meat grinder so they could grind meat up into it. Okay. Kind of cool. <laughs> it is kind of cool. All right. And uh, it's just more of the kind of stuff that, that oh, you yeah. get. All right. All the old barns and old ranches I've cleaned out. Okay. Well, I guess you're one of the uh, recyclers. Yep. <laughs> okay, it was real good talking to you. We're gonna yes, we're gonna continue on, and uh, I'll notice if I need anything. And and uh, like I said, you know, I, I don't I can't really carry anything around. He says, you know, you can buy it, leave it here, and on your way out, you can pick it up. So I think everybody probably knows that, except for me. So thanks for reminding me. Yep. Have a good one. Okay. Bye bye. So here's a guy that's uh, selling a generator here. I think he said uh, I won't go any lower than 90. Maybe it was 95. I didn't really hear the price, but. 300 mega amp uh, generator. You interested in one of those, sir? Huh? You interested in buying that? No, that was mine. That was yours? Oh, okay. My boy's selling it for me. Oh, okay. That's good. So, how long have you had that? I've had it for a couple of years. Okay. So, did you buy it used? Yeah. Okay. I put two uh, it runs good, works good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you get that for 90 bucks and then you get your uh, money's worth out of that, that's a really good deal because that's a big one. Yeah, they two dollars for a car better, so I'm just breaking even on it. <laughs> All right. And who's this little girl? What's your name? Gabrielle. Hi. Hello. Features all right. Say hi. Hi. What are you looking for while you're down here? Are you looking for toys or anything? If I was your age, I'd be looking for toys. In fact, I still look for toys. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. And here's a lady, and uh, I, I know you've often heard me say this is where you can buy some uh, a lot of good stuff, and people don't bring down the new Levi's and stuff that's going down here. They've actually got some uh, old jeans and things here. And I could be wrong. Maybe those are new, just made it look old. What do you know? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? I'm Sarah. <laughs> okay, Sarah, so you're interested in some of these clothes? Oh, yes, always. All right, so this looks like uh, older stuff. Has this all been used? Um, most of it, yes. So are There's those new jeans or old jeans? Um, these haven't used not very much, so they're still have quite okay, a few so they're, years. They're not very much. She's really se selling those like it's a good deal. These are pretty new. Okay, to me, they're better when they're old, but okay. All right. Hey, thanks a lot. Where are you from? Fiddletown. Did I get your name? Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Okay, keep on shopping, Sarah. Oh, I sure will. <laughs> well, this is something else when I came by I said wow that's a good deal this is like five bucks for this bike now it's not a four dollars and uh, you know it's it's got some wear and tear on it but yeah still and one behind it another one I guess he just priced that one down to four two because I think I saw it for five here's the things that I'm always usually buying whenever I can are these monitors so I got that there got some chairs really neat old stuff so, how about it, Tommy? You're pretty creative. But when you look at this stuff, you always think about like what it can be used for. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. So it's like a, it's a real trip. I I don't know. A lot of people probably just it's junk and 
I know me and Sue goes like, wow, that's pretty cool stuff. I could use this for this. If I change it over to that, I could do that for that. So obviously we must have a lot of stuff like this still laying around. Nope. How you doing? I'm doing swell. So, okay, so I went ahead and bought that monitor. Uh, only two bucks. Yes, sir, two bucks. And, and it works, right? What's that? And it works. And it works awesome. I guarantee it. Okay, and he guarantees it. And will you be Matter here? Fact, uh, I'd even give you my phone you... number just in case <laughs> it didn't work. Okay. There's, and uh, there's take my those chain. three. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not very good at doing change, so. That's okay, I am, so <laughs> that's good. The, the person on, then, that gets it has to be good at it, right? Yeah. That gets it back. Okay, so anyway, so uh, you got some pretty neat stuff here. And, you know, one of the reasons why I buy those, because I work with uh, TV and standard definition, and, you know, the new monitors, uh, they don't really quite you fit that. They don't fit, they don't fit that stuff well. Right, that's right. So when I see them, I buy them, because I know they're not making them anymore. That's exactly right. And this actually has an adapter cord that goes with it, too. So if you did want to adapt it, you can. Okay, so it even has an, an adapter cord. Board, and I don't have to pay any additional money, and that would probably only be three cents. <laughs> you can't thanks, beat that with thanks a, a lot, right? All Remember right. when those things used to go for about like two seventy or something? Like oh yes, no doubt. Back in the day, I'll tell you what, most items here one dollar. Okay. And uh, just to tell people about that, remember like LCD monitors, they always cost a lot of money, and then they found out, you know, they were all rigging the price. I don't That's know if right. you they're remember that. So they were, so they were all staying up, and everybody's saying like, God, everything gets cheaper. I, the computer used to cost a thousand now I can get it for like 300 but those monitors they still cost an arm and a leg right right but now hey two bucks you can't beat it. not anymore okay <laughs> okay bye bye everything here for almost everything here is for a buck well here's a really uh, neat booth especially if you uh, collect like old glassware and things like that I, this is kind of this kind of neat uh, I think it's got a little chip on the top of it 22 bucks I, I don't think we have this color but I I kind of like that uh, that frosted pink glass and stuff like that. Here's a lady looking at this. Maybe she'll talk to you. Maybe will you say hi to me for a minute? Hi, how are you? What's your name? So do you collect glassware? Uh, sometimes, sometimes. The, especially the uh, like? carnival glass. The carnival. What's the carnival glass? Yes. Kind of. Okay, mm -hmm. so is this, that's not carnival. No, that's but not I carnival. I'm pointing and looking at that. It was just pretty. Okay, so you like the color and stuff? Yeah. Those are 32 bucks. That must be a pretty good one. Yeah, no, I guess these are all pretty expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and uh, there's a few neat things. You can put that on the wall, put some plants in it or, or whatever. $18. This is a, a place for maybe collectors that are looking for some stuff to add to it because, in a way, this is like probably priced about to the top of the market going right now, huh? And carnival glass is very expensive. Mm -hmm. Spiral carnival. 36 bucks, eight glasses. Okay, very good. What do we have down here? Let's just look down here and see because this person must, in this booth, uh, get a lot of stuff and then hope that collectors come by. The people that like this stuff gets it. Yeah. These, whatever this is, isn't exactly my cup of tea at all. But you know, everybody sees in uh, glasses and things like that. And uh, I found uh, one of Barbie's boyfriends or something like that. And uh, this, this is only four bucks each. Man, I should buy one of these. My little uh, granddaughter who has uh, quite a lot of Barbies. But I don't know if she has any Barbie boyfriends. This one's kind of cool, huh? He's got the shorts on. He's got a boom box, backpack, and the uh, back of his hair is missing or something, right? Or that's where you write his name. Huh? And he needs a tan right up there. Okay, so this guy's pretty cool. Hey, Rob. Maybe we could do <laughs> I'm gonna get out of here. I guess I must be in the mood to buy stuff today or whatever. So, uh, I said that's pretty crazy. Am I doing broadcasting? Yeah. Well, I'm uh, gathering right now. What's your name? Hilda Santana. Where do you live, Gilda? <laughs> Hilda. H I L D A. Okay, Gilda, where do you live? Uh, Silverton, Oregon. Okay. I came in yesterday. Is Fourteen this, hour is this drive. Part of your booth? No, so I don't you have came a, down here to. You came. Did you drive down here just to see this stuff? I drove. Now, how do you know about this uh, flea market? I kind of grew up in the Plymouth, uh, Occam area. Okay. And this is a nice flea market, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's, it it is. But my dad and. Uh, I don't go to too many because they don't let me out of Amador County. Oh, yeah. But uh, you know, in Amador County, this is a probably the best one. And uh, yeah. when I see this stuff, I say it can't get any better because this is all original stuff. 
up, you know? Real, it's really a neat place. Yeah, you can find just yeah. about anything down here. I found, uh, well, thank you very much. And uh, we'll be back by and pick that up. So so anyway, Tommy, I was going to say, like, maybe, I don't know if I should be down here. I'm, I've just got here and I'm already buying stuff all over the, look, BB guns, baby. Well, here's a wood ride rider. Gun show, I had it on for 30. 400 bucks. Nice little Honda. Ride it home today. Is that a 90? It's a 125 TRX. Yeah, it's even bigger than I thought. So you could ride that home today? You can ride it home today or we'll gift wrap it and deliver it by Christmas. Yeah. Okay, well that's a long way off, so you know it might not run by the time Christmas comes. I'm just kidding you though. But uh, so that's a pretty good deal. So where do you live? Oh, El Dorado County, Placerville. Now is this your booth going down that way? Yeah, I'm from the Honda down there to all the uh, okay. Vietnam era night vision starlight okay. scopes. This guy's uh, checking out this BB gun. Yeah, he's looking at old BB gun that was uh, Daisy. It's a Daisy, but it's, it's plastic. Now is this is this one the wood? Is that that's is, an old red? Is that on working at all? Uh, that one there, I think he said, don't work. This one here doesn't really work either, but that's the, one of the first daisies when they were in Michigan. That's Arkansas, Michigan. That's a 1950s BB gun there. Oh, so, uh, so that's cool, too, because you learn a lot of stuff. I didn't know, you know, anything uh, about that. Uh, oh, well, you, you know, I mean, about the different ones. I know I had one as a kid, but I never... Yeah, the Michigan-made daisies are the first ones. That's where they I were I thought they came from your grandparents. That's where mine came from. I... <laughs> where mine came from. I <laughs> well, they could be. Uh, what you really need to see is that whole table up there. Let's well, all... see that whole table up there, but on our way, I wanted to stop because well, as I ones. as I walked by, he said, you had to see the big ones. They were, they were like these things right here, Tommy. <laughs> check, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> <See> a lot of heavy. <laughs> Yeah, oh my god. I think it is. Actually it's it's very light and uh, that's that's pretty wild. So that's good like hanging up on your wall or something, huh? You can wear them around. You can share it for a day. <laughs> you can wear them. Actually somebody does have them. So maybe somebody will get those that's a uh, you know, a gunfighter clown at the uh, Amador uh, uh, fair or something like that. That would be cool. You're not gonna believe it. Okay, you see, I won't over believe here. this stuff here. So let's let's go see what we won't believe. There's a piece from them. Uh, I'll give me $4 a piece. The guy says, oh, no, it's uh, five. Said, no, come on. Nah, nah, maybe five he'd do it for. Okay, so these are boy, what are these like? U.S. Army Starlight Scopes. And they are 100% legal because they're starlight. They're not infrared. That's from the M14 in Vietnam. Israeli M14. M14. Oh. M16. This, I've got powered up and it works. This was on the M2 machine gun in Vietnam. U.S. Army March was on the Ma Deuce. Oh, so let's see if we can see through that at all. I, I, oh, is no, this this is night vision, vision so, you, so you can't you tell that, of course. Day. You can but see that. This one works, and I've got that one put together. I haven't figured out how to power it up yet. But this is all Vietnam era. Can you imagine what the government paid for this in the 1960s? I'd say an awful lot of money. Now, uh, I've never seen through uh, uh, one that's uh, starlight. Yeah. But it's pretty bulky. It needs a little bit of ambient uh, light from the outside at nighttime. So okay. they... And uh, this one here, you said it's, it fits on the M4 and stuff. It, just, it obviously just doesn't go up on a, on a Picatinny rail or anything, right? Uh, no, but I'll bet these days they can modify anything. Uh, there are the mounts. See, if you could mount that on... Some of them, like that one in front there for the M14. Well, an M14 is just a big 308. That fits right on top of 308 rifle. Right. Back in the day. I mean, this is not stuff sure, people are going to use. It's military the, collection. State of the art, but this is really swell stuff. Platoon or early warning systems. This one's new old stock. They would some detect vehicles and some detect personnel. Around here, they would detect a lot of deer. How would how does this work? Is it working on its own, or you have to go out and put uh, sensors out and then wire well, them this, up, or what? This is the sensor right here. They would run wires in a series of loops, and they would hit the switch, and then it would go back. There is an antenna that screws on here, and it would transmit, and they would set these all around a perimeter, and they would know if there's people coming in. Okay, so you said they would do that, or uh, Salt so, Salt so Salt. you you know about this stuff, but did you uh, do you ever play with this stuff? No, no. I'm I just okay. know what I've researched oh. to. Uh, but uh, yeah, here's here's more of the mounts for the starlight scopes. These are actually hard to find, but it's only for a military collector. The average Joe, you know, is. But uh, 
Yeah, this yeah, might be fun to. Uh, mm -hmm. How much does any of this go for? Uh, this one's 400, and you can get all those for 400. But if someone buys it all, they get a better price. Okay. Even so, though it's What's this? What's this up here? You know. Well, you're talking. That, that's different. That fits on a 35 millimeter camera. It might work. That's night vision for a photographic camera, and it lights up and it's green inside. But I don't know how it works. So it's priced at 100 bucks, and who knows? It could be worth a whole lot more, or it fits like on uh, on your camera or whatever. Your camera, yeah, screws right onto the front of a 35 millimeter. Okay, so that used to be like maybe a, a, if you were a private detective and trying to catch somebody. Exactly. Okay, exactly. you can do that in the evening time. Hey, great! It was uh, fun talking to you. What's your name? Steve. Steve. Nice Steve talking. Allison. Where are you from, Steve? Placerville. Okay, so where do you collect all this stuff? You know, this is all my prop wash. So I bought these because I had some scopes that I wanted, but he just made me a deal on all of them. This I had for a while. The Grape Crusher sitting in my front yard is an antique. I get tired of looking at it, and it'll it needs to be stored inside. Uh, some of it's just things I don't need anymore, and I do a little bit of picking here and there. What's, what's this thing here? Is this a safe? Ah, oh, 1750s to 1850s Chinese ship's chest. Oh. This is the coolest piece in the whole place. <laughs> the Chinese would travel, and they'd carry this with them. It's made out of like a teak wood. It's real light. Okay. But this was their safe, their office, their gambling table, their business center they would you pull this one out and all the way in the back there's a hidden compartment back there so they probably had their jewels or their gold or opium or whatever they were dealing in so they would carry this with them because it was light enough and uh, lock it shut and it was like their safe ported chest but they'd also use it for a table you know because they were in a small area on a ship so it did everything this would be like their uh, secretary app or something on a smartphone yeah back in the days this was it <laughs> this was it look at the hardware these I priced on the internet if you punched in Chinese ship captain's chest you'll see these from two to three thousand dollars at the antique stores look at my price I forgot a digit but that's the price Chinese ship's captain so this would be a, a Chinese ship chest kid. you know captain gets thrown in there to pull up more results but here let me show you the compartment since he's got the camera. Okay. check this out yeah you won't see one of these so you pull out the drawer think no big deal and back there there's a string and there's a hollow cavity back there and it goes up a little bit so then inside this they would have more goodies you put something in there. that uh, you hope somebody would just bypass that goes in there now where do you put that <laughs> I'm sure Tommy saw that, but so that just slides right up and, and stays up there pretty easy. Yeah, it's all hidden. Cool. So they would carry this around. So this could be your dinner table, your business top desk, gambling center, you name it. Footstool, oh. probably sit on it too and be comfortable. You'd carry all your stuff in there that was valuable to you. And I guess if you were captain, you got somebody else to carry it for you. If you were lucky, yeah. yeah cool. Hey, thanks a lot. It was really uh, fun talking with you. Nice. All right, you too. So some of the stuff I know what it is, some of it I really don't. But look at these. Here's some really big circuit breakers, baby. And. Uh, I'm not sure if those go for like uh, three phase. Um, what would it be? 120, 360, you know, so like uh, maybe like a, a three phase thing here, some meters, a photo switch. So I guess this would sense light, but look at the size of that. It's, had a, it's a photo switch, it says, but I don't know. Come on down and tell me what it is. Well, it, you'd have that in your garage, like a, for a shop, okay. and you'd put that at the front entrance and then something, a reflector in the other side, so somebody passed passes the beam and he set a yeah. buzzer off okay. so you know somebody comes in the shop then so this is an early model like a little laser thing that you see in the movies yeah but right? this is actually uses a light beam so this is actually a lens that a little lights behind and all you have to have is something to break the beam and the buzzer would go off so that way you know somebody's in a shop you're out working around on something you don't have to be right there at the door all the time it's pretty good so you wired it up to like 120 is that what it does you know i don't know probably is yeah, 
15 volts. Okay. Yeah. yeah but these are pretty old, made in Massachusetts. We we uh, cleaned out an old uh, garage in a in a basement of a house, and all this stuff was in it. It's just amazing some of the stuff we found. Right, it is because uh, you know someday somebody's going to clean out my old stuff, and they won't find this era of technology, but they're going to find a lot of, uh, well, a lot of these old stuff. You can still use today in a lot of the the panels that people and, have. And it is good because uh, man, sometimes you you, you want to look for an old one because some of the old breakers are you know are scarce they don't make that one right, anymore right. but your panel to change the panel out right. it's going to cost you like yeah, six a thousand bucks we have a ton of them yeah. did you see that old thing sitting on the stove over there yeah it's i saw like some of the stuff four gauges yeah that's an old switch unit from 1910 for the telephone back when we all had the old rotary phones a lot of people yeah. don't even know what they look like anymore but that thing is really unique how they used to have all the old switches in there to make the different numbers that you okay. dial come up. Did you just find out about that or were you doing uh, that, hey, working that kind of stuff? At the phone company many years ago and he said that's what it was. Okay. He found, say, well, you know, uh, Sharon at Volcano Telephone or some of the people that work up there, they might be interested. Oh, they yeah. have a lot of old stuff. And, yeah. Uh, uh, you never know. Well, it's, uh, we got some old radios. Yeah. Old There's stuff. some uh, lights that are pretty yeah. cool. Some old uh, tube type radios like it was saying. Like, man, I can remember I don't want to say, hey, I can remember that stuff. Because so we left some of the uh, manly stuff, I guess, and now we're still looking at some uh, some more things. And, you know, I was kind of drawn to this because of the colors. I, I like that color. The bench is cool. Uh, that looks like a towel rack, a birdhouse. And uh, so some of the stuff is pretty good to do that. Well, there's a bigger bench back there, if you, especially if you like that. Uh, right now it's kind of shabby chic. Shabby chic, that's right. How I have to paint it. You know, my wife says, I said, you know, it's just look like someone needs a nice paint job to be restored, but but that is really in like that. That's over, yeah. it is. that's from the 20s, 1920s. Wow. Cool. Tommy, come on over here and like uh, take a look at it from the, maybe the front side. Yeah, it's so, it was uh, old Tommy. Um, and, okay, Tommy's going to look at it like that. And, it was handmade. Okay, wait a minute. We can't hear you when you're talking, but I heard what you said. It's built in the 1920s by a Filipino guy. And how do you know that? Huh? Because I found out from where I got it from. Oh, okay. Yeah. And where did you get it from? In Elk Grove at Grove. At, a, at an estate sale. Okay. And what's your name? Barbara. And uh, do you do this for like a living or something, no. Barbara? Just every now and then. Where do you live? Sacramento. Okay. So it's pretty neat. So. Nice uh, flea market here, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The best. How's that chicken? Oh, that's a oh, rib. Oh, this is a rib. It's killer. <laughs> it's, it's a killer rib and it's almost gone. Okay. So neat things over there. And uh, thanks for talking with us. So you're never too old to come down to a flea market, no, are you? No, I'm 86. never too old. How old are you? If you don't mind me asking. Sorry. That was pretty straightforward. 86, Granny. 86. Okay. So have you found anything down here that you like? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In fact, I bought them. Oh, okay. Some little lanterns, oil lanterns, brass ones. Okay. Now, where are you from? I, I live right here in town. Okay. I, I'm originally, I was born in Michigan, I come to California. And tell us your name. Goldie Stanton. Okay, Goldie. Uh, so, this is pretty neat. Now, when you uh, see a lot of the stuff that's pretty old, you must relate to it a lot like I do. I see stuff that was like, you know, uh, you know, in the 50s, 60s to me and Oh, yes. All right. Well, it's nice talking with you. It's very nice talking with you. And what's your name? Christine Baird. Okay. It's nice of you to drive your grandma around town here. Absolutely. you got to come out and enjoy the sun when it's here. <laughs> okay. Especially if you have a nice sun here. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Well, you guys have a great day. Hey, thanks for talking with us. Thank you. Okay, another really cool thing about uh, Plymouth, of course, is the uh, you know old-timey buildings and everything that are here. There's a, uh, a nice building there. You know, I used to think that, that uh, Wolf Hine owned that, but I'm really not sure. I'm probably wrong. I'm wrong on a lot of things. But anyway, pan down there, Tommy, and then we'll, we'll be panning into something that I saw for the first time. So, uh, you know, I, it's, it's uh, relatively new going up. Looks like it's going to be like a a hotel or something. Uh, 
What do you think, Tommy? Looks like a hotel to me. Looks like a, a lot of rooms, maybe, at the top and the way the windows are, maybe not, office building or whatever. But a nice two-story building that's uh, coming on, being added to. So there's a lot of change going on down here in Plymouth, and that's uh, going to be somebody's business, huh? Okay, now I'm with a gentleman here, and he's got uh, a lot of old tools, and these are pretty cool. Yeah, I've been collecting tools since I was eight years old. Okay. I have a very extensive cast iron toy collection, and since I moved up here to Amador County, I've been getting a lot of garden art, uh, barn sales, and I've gotten too much, and so I'm trying to thin what down. I was say, sometimes you start collecting this stuff, next and time I, you look at it, I, and you go, like, my I gosh, I've got so much of it. I built one barn, and I'm building another barn, and I just ain't got the room to hold it all, so I try and thin down a little bit, but I'll recoup more back up again. You know, I'll come here next year and buy, and then the year after that, I'll come and sell a little bit, maybe. Okay, but that's a pretty interesting hammer. Though. That's a very nice 10-pound ten, ten railroad hammer. Okay. That's a nice piece, and there's a railroad spike hammer right next to that without the handle. So yeah, those are early 1900. Okay, pieces. one was to hit the spikes with. What was the other one that's, uh, you know, it's got the big head on it? You know, I really don't know. I, I guess maybe you gave that to the guy if he if he hit your you hand know, a few I times. It might be to hit the, the wooden rails oh, to, okay. to get him in alignment. There you go. That's you have a da guy stand on top of the, the wooden plank and tap it into position. Okay, that sounds pretty good. We go down, there's some kind of thing there. It looks like a... That's like a riveter. That's okay. a riveting uh, hand tool. Um, before we had a lot of power That's tools now, uh -huh. and the Chinese came in and took over our economy. Like a, some kind of a pop rivet tool or something? Yes, yes. Okay, and uh, that thing that looks like a drill? That, but, is that what that is? Okay, the, the one on the right is a hand drill. You would put your knee on there. Okay. The one in the red, that is from 1904, I believe, and it's by a guy named, um, he, the machine's called a black. Hawk, and it won the world's best invention in 1904. It's a corn husker. It takes the corn kernels and removes them. And I'll, the I'm going to move this a minute. Come on over with me, because I could, yeah. I could tell where I guess maybe. It seems like the husker part. This stuff's quite heavy too. Yeah, you stick cap. your corn right through here. Okay. Rotate it around, and it actually shoots the cob out, and then the kiblets fall into a bowl. You would put this on a bucket. It fit over a bucket, mm -hmm. and you just crank it up. That's how Grandma did it back in the day. When, you know, when we didn't go and buy a can of corn. A lot of hard work back then. Yeah, life wasn't easy back then for a lot of people. But okay. this was the number one invention in 1904 but it, for the world. But it would keep you pretty busy. Number one. In Invention for the world. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Yep. And the guy's name, AIDS Patch. That was his name. He's got his name wrote right on there. Okay. And this is called the Black Hawk. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yep. And she's awesome. heavy. Cool. Yeah. Yep. That's a real piece of machinery there. This is nice. These are old vulcanizers where you got a flat tire on your car. Oh, okay. Yeah. You would burn your rubber patch onto your tube. You'd light it on fire. And just clamp it down and burn the rubber on there. Now you just go to the service station, right? You, know, you pulled over on the road and fixed your stuff right then. Right. Just a lot of stuff was. This is a cool little pulley thing. How much is this? Oh, that I'm asking 15 for. That's a double, triple pulley. Yeah, that's a nice little piece. We got some you know anything like how much, how much work energy does that save or if you work that right? You know, I guess if you were probably to pull 100 pounds on that, it'd probably take, I'm thinking, 30 pounds of pressure, 33 pounds of pressure. Okay. That's, that's pretty good. I mean, back in the old days and barns and everything, uh, we had this stuff, you know, up the top. Uh, people use that a lot. I don't know, what, I, I guess, have, what you I use mean, nowadays. I have hay elevators, and you know, that's what the big peak at the front of the barn was. Okay. They had the elevator, and you brought your stagecoach in, you build up your hay and rolled it up and brought it into your barn. But now we all have our pickup trucks, you know. But back then, life wasn't easy, like you said. I saw a new invention. I think it was pretty new. It was just uh, the other day. Sue cho showed it to me. It was on YouTube. And basically, they had like a hay bale, and this little kid, uh, they uh, it showed like a... I seen that. Little see, wheels. Little wheels on it. And she, right. she stuck it in one end of the hay, and then went around the other thing, had a little U thing, and I go, uh, she stuck that in, picks the thing I up, and that. takes the hay bale, and I go like, well, there you go. You're not going to get muscled up from uh, moving right. the hay and around. It, it was only eight years old, and she hugged that whole bale of hay. Right. Yeah, so it gave me a day. I'm, I'm actually building a new barn. I have one feed barn, and I'm building another one right now, and I was going to use one of my eight... I have a, a hay uh, elevator from 1868, I think it is, and I was going to incorporate that to the front of my new barn to bring my hay in, but I seen that girl with them wheels. I go, well, that's a great idea, you know, but I probably still put the hay elevator up. Right. I guess I, you could, you know, bring the bale over there and then uh, take right. it out. Right. Well, 
I'm, I got a, my new barns way down the bottom of a hill. I had a lot of guys that I knew, like in the service, that were you know from uh, the uh, you know the ag states, you know, right. or something like that. You know, muscle, they, they'd be muscle up or whatever. And you're like, oh, man, how'd you get some big? Oh, man, you like doing hay, man. Yeah. He's like you know, take those big bales of hay and throw them on up there to somebody, well, and, and they're guys. They're, I need the hay elevator. They're, they're quite <laughs> heavy, but you know, uh, to come up with that little thing, it's just like you know, we we could still <laughs> invent things. It's it's uh, right. uh, it's pretty crazy to me. Yeah, right. you know, I, I collect a lot of man's early inventions. That's what I'm a tool and die maker by trade, okay. and I appreciate man's early inventions from late 1800s, early 1900s, when the beginning of our industrial movement. And we really had machines down, and what I. I think what there's only like seven simple machines or something like but that. You know, all your early inventors were all machinists, and and I take pride in my trade, and and I'm always thinking of a new way to do something. Yeah, and so I can I mean, imagine how it was a hundred years ago. Coming from two a little bit like so, you know, one of them is an inclined plane, right? So right. you know, you want to take some up. It's you know what they you know now we use it for like a, a ramp to, for a uh, handicapped people, right? That's an inclined plane. Uh, when you take an inclined plane, you put it around a, well, it's like a cylinder, and you have a screw. Right. Right. So right. There's all these kind of uh, things. So they're just really simple machines. Yeah, but uh, somebody saw and said, "Wow, well, I put this together, that together, this together." Right, right, right. And before you know, it, you got a new, a new invention, yeah. and and market it, get your patents going, and take care of business. It's really cool. And now today, uh, so quite a lot of things are able to be done in a digital universe. You know, where it's like uh, down there moving information around like that. But when you come out to the, you know, the uh, analog universe, the real one, as as we would. You still wind up having to hit a hammer, to, you know, to knock something in or whatever. So it's really cool. And like you say, when you come by, it's fascinating because it brings back, uh, you know, memories and uh, how things used to be done. Right, right. And, and I, I really appreciate man in his early days, you know, trying to make it through the economy. Like I said, the ag days and stuff in the early 1900s. Life wasn't easy in the farms. You know, I just moved up to Amherst County five years ago. I love it up here. And and I and I love seeing all the old barns and, and how man cooperated a hundred years ago because it was not easy you know it really wasn't and and these are some of the tools that were used back then and and I appreciate man for, for making these for so I can appreciate them now they were so heavily constructed like you said that corn husker that thing's 40 pounds you know and 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 that was a woman's job to go go do that you know yeah well was one of the reasons why I weighed that much is because they didn't have the tools and dies to make it smaller or right. lighter or, or any of the alloy so uh, all this stuff kind of gets better as one thing goes. It helps in other uh, industry and things like that. You know, so we you can see that here as well as in, like I said, on the digital universe now, too. So it's, it's, right. it's pretty cool. But for a lot of people, life isn't easy now still. Right, that's true. <laughs> Did you see my hamburger press I have up here? Now, let's see that, and then Wait, we're, then we're going to move on a little bit. Let me see this hamburger press. Right. Let's see. Let's give our... Uh, I see it now. McDonald's. <laughs> Hang on. Put your hamburger patty in there. Mm -hmm. And you have wax paper roll through. Yeah, it actually yeah. cuts your foot and folds your paper. Mm -hmm. Put another pad down and you would pull it out with your hamburger patty. Pull it over. Mm -hmm. Next hamburger, just production. That was production. There you go. I uh, I use a couple of plates from that. I just pull them out of the <laughs> out of the cabinet and, and and do that. But yeah, I don't. I'm not making a, a whole lot of them. So thanks a lot. Tell us your name one more time. Billy Sadu. Okay, Billy. Not nice from Jackson. Okay, Billy. From yes. Jackson. Where are we from originally, Bill? I'm from Bay Area. Okay. Yes. Worked in San Francisco and and come out here to Amador County and I found out when you lose power, your water don't pump no more. More and I'm a city boy learning the city. It's really out fun. Here. I, when I first came out here, I used to say, when you lose the power, I'd say, well, you know, that's like God's day of giving you a day off. Yeah, I, I God's was, way. I was I mountain dumb, and I, I love it up here in Amador County. It is so wonderful. The people are so polite and, and courteous. I, I wouldn't give this up for nothing. I'm not going nowhere. Well, good. So for, <laughs> for the, the rest of us that are jaded, remember how good it was when we first came out. <laughs> it still is. Okay, okay great. All right, great. And of course, it's really nice to have uh, old stuff and get old stuff, but you know when you're trying to pack stuff up or put it in the refrigerator and everything, you want it nice and clean and new and all that, right? Of course, glass still stays new, but this is cool. Tupperware. Yes. Tupperware's been around, as you know, for over 67 years. It's our birthday month of Tupperware. 67 years? Mm -hmm. So this stuff came in at night 46, I would say, then. Right, correct. I'm a, I'm a 67. I'm a 46 model. <laughs> okay. It's amazing. So, yeah. so how much Tupperware do you have in your house? Uh, we don't have a whole lot. 
Well, I don't know if we have a lot of Tupperware. We did, you know, and uh, I get it and everything. They're, they're always making stuff. Tupperware is always different inventing. Different kind of things and everything. Right. You know what I found looks like a, it's pretty cool stuff is the is this, the free stuff that you get from KFC when I guess uh, Susie comes back and I guess maybe the coleslaw or something comes in. On. But it's a really nice container. I can't believe it. Like, that's a good container. It works pretty good. You have the other where we call it, but Tupperware does last a lifetime and warranty. We do have the warranty. I guess it lasts a lifetime if you can find it. <laughs> anyway, but I, I'm not putting it down. I know it's just really great stuff. And uh, what's this thing right here? We have quite a few different chef tools in Tupperware. Um, it's the mandolin, one of our leading items, top selling half off items for hostesses. So you have a blade, two different blades, an adjustment of a height so you can make different things. The instructions come with different ideas on how to make okay. and prep your food and making salad time healthier and cool. quicker. What's this? Another gadget, squeeze it decorator. So whether you're doing twice baked potatoes and topping it off, decorating a cake. Okay, cake decorator. Yes. Okay. We have microwave cookware. We have a, now our newest thing is the latest and greatest, the pressure cooker. A phenomenal product line in the microwave. And in Professional cookers. So you stick that in the microwave? Microwave and you pressure cook. Steam cooks only in our smart steamer. And our Tupperwave over here is our microwave cooker. You can make a chicken, rotisserie chicken, in basically 30 minutes. Healthier eating, whole food eating. Okay, interesting. All right. Thank you guys for your time and stopping. Well, thank Tupperware. You. Thank you very much. Nice stuff. Thanks, Lee. How are you doing? All right, I'm doing okay. Okay, what are you making here? Tamales. Tamales, okay, great. What's uh, what's in here? Can you take that top off without burning yourself? That's it. In, under there is some tin foil, so we can't really see him, but he's making some tamales, good old-fashioned ways, a propane, a stove, and everything. So let's let's go over here for a second and find out how much are the tamales. Um, they're $16 a dozen, um, $8 for half a dozen. We have chicken tamales, cheese with jalapeno tamales, and pork tamales. And then we have some pico de gallo and some spicy hot sauce to go along with them. Okay, so that's pretty cool. This is where a person comes, gets a lot of tamales, take them home, put them in the refrigerator, and cook them up. Yeah. You know, I used to have to go down, well, a friend of mine, we used to go uh, in Stockton when we worked down there, and we would go, I guess, in some part of old town Stockton and, uh, and, and buy them. But I guess you bring them up here. We bring them up here from Sacramento, yeah. Okay. My sister, we she starts baking like two weeks ahead of time, and she cooks Where like... Where do you usually sell these at? She just sells them here, and then she sells them in Christmas. She takes order, and okay. she sells them in Christmas to the capital. She has a lot of orders there, okay. and then she sells all uh, businesses around here in Plymouth okay. um, during Christmas time after the 23rd. There so. you go, an entrepreneur making uh, making some money during the holidays. Correct. All That's right. what she does. Nice talking with you. Okay, Thank nice you talking much. to you. Come and eat. Okay, so uh, it looks like you got a tamale. Did you get it from that lady right over there? I did. I had heard that they were the best and they're really good. Okay. They're yeah, very um, good. That's, that's pretty good. So you, you didn't buy a, a dozen? You just got one for today? <laughs> this is breakfast. Breakfast, okay. Rice and <laughs> And, uh, right. beans. beans and chicken tamale. Okay. Tell us your name again. I forgot. Rochelle Cooper. Okay. You're from right around here, right? I'm from, yeah, right up the road, Shenandoah Valley. There you go. Yeah. How are you doing? <laughs> God, look at you. Yeah. Are hey. we all getting like uh, white hair or what? Well, I dye mine this way. Dude. You know, so I yeah. look, look normal, yeah. I dye mine, but I, I think I people would say, hey, that guy dyes his hair. Yeah, no, this is natural. <laughs> Thank you, really. Yeah. All right. So that's good. And uh, is keeping busy? Yeah. Uh, people are coming out of the woodwork for plans for some reason. I don't know if something's going on. And um, there seems to be a lot of building coming on. And uh, tell everybody your name again. John Peabody. Very good, John. And uh, John has a lot of pretty girls in the, uh, used to be in the county. Are there, are there any left around here? Several. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, John, what is that building that's going on there? You know that's here? Yes, they're remodeling. There were a couple of apartment buildings and they're turning it into like a hotel. Okay. That's what and combining the two in a new face. And, Oh, good. Yeah, the folks from Taster. I believe that's their project. There we go. Yeah. All right. Well, good. Uh, how you been? That'd be great. <laughs> Tasters, they're on the, You know, they're always uh, making stuff on a, on a you know a, a high level. So that I'm sure that's going to be done very nicely. A lot of class. Yeah. Okay. It's quite a project. Okay, we're doing good. We're just uh, moving on. Maybe I can talk to these young girls and find out what what they're uh, looking for today. Hi. Can I say hi to you? Hi. What's your name? Sophia. Hi, Sophia. And who's this? What's your name? Ella. Are you sisters? Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are you girls looking for today? Um. Well. Sophia, why don't you go on over there with her too, and then we can talk about both at the same time. Um. We're looking for my 
Mother's Day presents. You know, that's really thoughtful. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and what do you think your mom might like? Um, jewelry. Moms like jewelry, don't they? Mm-hmm. Okay. I got her a vase. A, a what? A vase. Oh, a vase? That's cool. And uh, do you have it in there? Where is it? Did you already give it to her or is that your grandma? What? Yeah. Okay. I like it when I ask two questions and they answer it like... <laughs> so take your pick which uh, answer... Different. Oh, that's a nice face, huh? Yeah. Okay. This is John Peabody's family. These are this his granddaughters. John Peabody's and family? Like These are some of John Peabody's uh, offsprings uh, once removed? Thirteen. Okay. Good. Yeah, great. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. And... Uh, you know this gentleman back here. How's it going? Tom. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing good to see you. You got into marketing out here at the flea market? Yeah, we bring stuff back from Florence and have a good time with it. And uh, went down to Florence to get this stuff. We go three, four times a year, whether we need it or not. <laughs> so where do you get this stuff in Florence? From the, uh, the different vendors. We deal we deal with cer ceramic shop exclusive. Some people that, that we've known for over the years and. Uh, a jewelry store by the name of Alex Supplies. Uh, oh, yeah, it's all the real stuff. It's a, tell everybody your name again. Michael Politi, Italian Jewelry and More. My wife, Dolores. Italian Jewelry and More. Yeah. And uh, this one's got some uh, nice things. It's a nice chest. I'm not sure where this chest is, is, was made or anything like that. A little, little end table. Uh, actually, this is more like a, a stand, like a plant stand or stuff. I usually look at this. I'll check and see how sturdy this thing feels because I like having these around. For some reason, you always need another one to put a new plant that you just bought on it and around the house. And uh, I'm going to walk in here a little bit. Maybe I can talk to this lady. Hi, what's your name? Mara. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How Is are you? Is this your booth or are you a customer? I would like to talk yeah. that lady. What are you looking for in here? I'm just looking. Just looking? Yeah. I do a lot of that, too. <laughs> okay. How much is that little lamp stand? Uh, and actually, a lamp stand? Or? Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. Yeah, I, I actually refinished it myself. Okay. What was it like before you refinished it? Uh, it was beat up, covered in spiders, cobwebs, uh, sand. So I brushed it and refinished it. So it's got some uh, nice stuff there. So who are these? Who are these? Are you? Uh, what's your name? Chase. How you doing? What's your name? Myrie. Are you guys looking around buying stuff? Did you know? Yeah. What'd you buy so far? Uh, I didn't buy anything. Yeah. Okay. How about you? Did you get anything yet? Uh, I bought one of those like gum shock where you pull out the gum and it like shocks you. You might want to put up. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, like a, a, a piece of gum out of a thing. So you give it to your friends and say, hey, I want a piece of gum. And yeah. Yeah. It actually shocks you? Yeah. I think when I was a kid, they used to have a spring and it came down and smashed your finger. Oh, that would hurt. All right, we stole Yeah, but some people think like getting shocked does too. Oh, here we go. We got a piece of gum right here. Let me try it. This one, this one. Pull it, pull it. Whoa. <laughs> It's just enough to make you jump. Go ahead. It's a good little tingle. You want to feel it, Tommy? Thank you. All right. Yeah, it's too late. She's moving on. She's like, I didn't jump enough. Okay. Uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah. So you bought one of those? Uh-huh. That'll be fun at school, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody. Wanted to see my new toy? Oh, no. Don't put it out there like that. Just, you know, make them ask you for a piece. <laughs> maybe, maybe put a, you know, put a new double mint wrapper or something on it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Okay, here we're at a booth, and a uh, lady's name is has it is uh, Jeannie, and uh, so I just noticed the art is kind of uh, kind of interesting, you know, kind of modern and everything. That's a pretty good thing for maybe somebody to put their uh, maybe by the bar or by the wine, a nice wine glass. That's that's probably pretty cool. There's like a phone, a twenty bucks with flash redial. It's, to me, it looks like European styling, so I'm not really sure. Let's see what the yeah, but that's for uh, you know. Phone for here. What happens when you uh, you don't want to sell for twenty bucks anymore? Just move it up to fifty. Now it's fifty dollars. Hello, Sue. You there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm on an old rotary phone. Who'd have thought, right? Yeah, that's uh, yeah, it's hooked up to a smartphone. All right. Bye bye.
Yeah. Well, thank you, and uh, you know, interesting stuff. Enjoy yourself down here. Thank you. It's got a nice shady spot. Not gonna get much tan out here. Okay. Well, now we're looking at some uh, really old technology. Uh, maybe it's not even technology; it's just a life form, but uh, flowers. And uh, I really like the plants and everything. I'm not sure what this is. It almost looks like a some kind of creeping Charlie. But that's exactly what that is. Is that what that is? Okay. And uh, this little plant. I think this is money plant. Uh, or some. What do they call this? Creeping Jenny. Creeping Jenny. Yeah. yeah okay. And because uh, I know a, a money plant looks a little bit different but I have some of this and I think somebody called maybe that I'm gonna have to try to remember the name of it but anyways like terrarium is that like a pansy what is that it's a pansy okay you little pansy you okay and uh, nice lady down here look she's eating some uh, some vegetables she's eating her vegetables is that a vintage market all right from the, the market there and cool stuff these things are pretty really interesting. This are, might be really small, but man, it could get really big really, really quick, can't they? Yeah, they, they grow really easily. They're really interesting. We have a few, and I wouldn't have thought, because they're not necessarily my cup of tea, but when they grow up, they are so interesting. And so they have like uh, different kind of leaves, different leaf structures and you know, things. That's always, that's always neat. Yeah, there you go. Drought tolerant. Uh, hopefully, I'll still have some water in my kitchen to be able to, to uh, feed it every now and then, but they don't even like a lot of water. Do they? Can you ruin them by giving them water? Pardon? Can you wreck them by giving them too much water? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They'd be absolutely. better off without water. Okay. <laughs> How do you know when they need water? You can tell by the looks of just, the, <laughs> My wife can't. She can look at us and say, you know, you need this or you need that, and, and they do really well. So some people do. Well, this is kind of interesting. Yeah. They sell these kind of bags. Is that it? So is at the um, Zimmerman's Market, Hilltop Market. Hilltop Market. Okay, she said you can buy those at the Hilltop Market. It's hard to hear uh, the lady that's that's down there eating her salad. And uh, anyway, pretty interesting. Okay, interesting. Tommy, I think is he's showing you now the person who makes these. And these are cool. It's so like at the top of the wine barrel, and the legs are barrel stays from the from the side, turned inside out. So those are pretty cool and I'll have to tell you I don't think I've ever seen that before um, although I bet I bet they've been around the idea for a, for a while my husband made those um, they are like you said that that's the bottom of the wine barrel that's why that one's redder and darker and that one's the top of the wine barrel and he made those so the, bo the bottom is redder and darker because what so it's on the ground so it doesn't get from the wine that's the inside of so, the barrel from the wine oh, okay I get it for some reason I guess I was thinking it was the outside, but this is the inside. Yeah. All right. Well, the inside. Now, did he have to take this and cut cut the stays down and stick them back in here? Is that yes. what that is? Okay. He did. He had to have our 11-year-old daughter help him put the stays back in. Because she's more dexterous? Or? <laughs> it kept that's slipping. That's the right on. word? It kept slipping on him. Yeah, that's why, because <laughs> stuff slips on you. Okay, yeah. and uh, that's yeah. pretty cool. What's your name again? My name is Patty. We are raising funds for Amador Stars for the Camp Out oh. for Camp. Answer, All right. um, which is in September 12th this year. So you come out here and help raise money for it as well. Uh, yes. Well, good for you. Uh -huh. Thank right. you. Okay. <laughs> That's great. And I like those tables, and I think you could probably see where you could buy those. I think Tommy already got that. Uh, the flea market down here, like like I said, has a lot of stuff for for guys and things like that. This looks like some sort of a uh, surveying type equipment here. The tripod, something, another level, but and I'm sure that's so over there are some nice old fishing rods, 16 bucks, 40 bucks. Lots of different. Let's see, there's some split bamboo. These are are usually quite a collector's item still and uh, a lot of people that's $27 a lot of people prefer fly fishing with those another uh, another one so there's a few split bamboo some graphite a lot of old reels yeah 
<laughs> well, I sure spent my time reading these when I was a young kid, like uh, looking at all the stuff. You'd say, "Man, pretty soon this is going to happen." And come on out. Looks like the guys building a building a racer. Huh? His wife's so happy, huh? Oh, finally, my husband has something he likes to do. Okay. <laughs> More neat stuff. You can just pan through here, Tommy, as we go by. A nice little thing for maybe a grandkid or just put in your backpack. Twelve bucks. It's a nice little, ice nice fishing. little thing, huh? Ice fishing rod. Oh, so, it's for ice yeah. fishing. Yeah, okay, there's a, there's the interesting stuff. You ought there's to get interesting it. stuff. You know, I should get one or two of these. I, my wife collects. We have a a, a bunch of stuff that's just old and red, and this fits the bill. Okay, what's on the side? This is a World War II surplus powder storage life is not guaranteed. It's still full. It's still full, but what's in it? A smokeless powder. Smokeless powder. So, oh, smokeless powder, is that like uh, like a gunpowder? It's gunpowder. Yeah, all of this is. All of this is. Oh, cool. So, is this what you would buy and then take so many grains or whatever and um, mm -hmm. put it in there for reloading and everything? Yeah, this one is still still sealed. Man, and look how good that seal is. That's like... Yeah, it's, it's, it's usable. No... Uh, yeah, there's no air got to it or anything, so it's 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 usable. Really? So you can just see what air getting this stuff does, oxidize it. So yeah. Cool. So how much is one of these uh, boxes of this? Twenty-eight dollars. Huh. Yeah. You know, find... the, the, are they? I don't know anything about gunpowder stuff inside. Are they all like the same, or some finer, no, some no. thicker, or whatever? They're all different. The, the higher the number, the slower the burning on the powder. Oh, okay. Yeah. You got so the, this must be pretty quick at 205. Norma, I'm not sure of. These these are all IMR powders, which, uh, you know, the improved military uh, rifle powder, hmm. like 4350. Uh, and the bigger, the bigger the case is, the heavier the bullets, you use a smaller, uh, higher, uh, slower burning powder, higher number. And uh, because it builds too much pressure, if you use a fast burning powder, and when the case capacity, you could have a... So you want to know what you're doing if you're reloading. That's you might sure. have a real disaster. Okay. Yeah, I hear that. The disaster might be you. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly okay. right. And, uh, Think hard. Yeah. Yeah. So these uh, bullets? That's bullets. That's bullets for a 270 caliber. These are actually uh, bone jigs that was used for tuna. Okay. They used to commercial fish. And, mm -hmm. uh, the, and back in the day, before everything got kind of modernized, this is what you'd pull for uh, tuna commercially. And you had a, two hooks. You know, uh, one thing, okay, I was going to say, you know, I look at that and go, like, there's, there's right not right. a hook. So it had two, came through the front here. The well, their leader went through there, yeah. the double hook, barbless hooks in the back for tuna. So you had no trouble getting them off when you threw them aboard. Yeah, you don't want to slow down. Yeah, exactly. You get so your full bore. <laughs> Do they fall off on? Yeah, they fall off, but, but if you're going full bore, no, they no, don't have an opportunity. Like, no, no. like they always say, you keep a tight line on them. <laughs> yeah, keep and that's all hand on the boat and get that thing back down there. And that's all hand over hand. Yeah, that's a Western knife there. How much is this? Hunting knife. That one there is what, 85. Mm -hmm. these, these are high end. These two knives. And, uh, that one there, I don't have the sheath for it, but uh, that one is extremely sharp. Hmm. All right. Cool stuff. What cool. else do you have down here still? How about these celery seeds? You got the celery seeds in those? I I'm gonna... know them have. My wife's got that. Is there seeds still in some of this kittle? Oh, I think so. Hmm. Oh, yeah, it's this full. Is, uh... Like I said, we I don't know why, but we have like a lot of we have like a lot of old stuff that was red. And so we have this one kind of camera that just has yeah. red stuff on it. So I see uh, some things we could add to it. And some of them are motor oil, so this would yeah, that, that kind of goes with it too. Home lubricant. All right, and Hartwood's probably. Never heard of that. Interesting stuff. Look at this Folgers can. I think I can kind of remember a Folgers can where it looked like with a That's boat an on it. Do you have any idea what year that might have been from? I don't know. What year is the little Folgers can? Right there. Oh, boy. That's the old turnoff. I know the 50s yeah. for sure. Could be 40s. 40s, probably. With okay. a graphic on it. Interesting. Interesting. Hey, thanks a lot. You bet. Hey, I saw this and I said, gosh, I'm...
pretty sure I had one of these things. Uh, if not, it must have been something that I wanted to have. And I think you were little, I think you could sit on the top of this and uh, move this around. I think that's even what it says. It says a ride on them over here. and Pretty cool. More nice uh, old things. And here's a few more uh, neat things. I was saying, I, I first saw them, I said, these are nice things to put some uh, shelves up, put some shelves. This is kind of decorative, but just with uh, flat steel and some turn stuff. So this is two. You get two shelves for 22 bucks, I think. This is very, you know, way more neat, ornate, and, uh, of course, bigger. This doesn't have any... Uh, you have to drill into this, so I'm not sure what it was used for originally, but... Uh, those are very nice. Seventy bucks a pair for that. Here's a, this is an odd, an oddball, and there's a couple of nice pieces of something. Two of them for uh, twenty-five. And here we're with some uh, marketers right out here in the street, hawking their wares. Cotton candy, huh? Yes. Where's the cotton candy booth? Right behind you. Okay. At and the end. Uh, who's manning or making the cotton candy? Pine Grove Civic Improvement Club. That's what I was gonna say. I think yeah. did, now, do they own that cotton candy machine or something? Yes, we do. Okay, because yes. you know wherever I go, there's cotton candy. That's the Pine Grove uh, Civic Improvement Club. And we are putting on. Yeah. The we're we're the putting on music in the park on the Fourth of July. Okay. The Groovin' in the Grove event. Okay. Now is that going to be at Pine Grove Park? Yes. Okay, that's what I would have thought. Yeah. So we're just making sure. What's the date again? Uh, July 4th. And what's the band? Uh, Mr. Pinstripe. Mr. Pinstripe, okay. A lot of people love Mr. Pinstripe. Yeah, and it's going to be a free event. We're paying for it with the cotton candy. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Maybe I should just sell him or give him some cotton candy. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, great. No, okay, thank that's, you. that's really good. Well, thank you very much. So uh, that's over here, down on that side. and. They're, they're quite good at marketing. So that, you know, that used to have like flowers and a lot of other places in it, but it looks like they've added to the park down in the back there to me. Has this place changed as much in a year? Boy, it's, uh, it's, it's in a lot. So who says nothing changes? But uh, I guess it looks like the people with the plants are still there with the pickup truck there. And then there's some food booths going around. And these ladies would love to get me to buy some cotton candy. I guess they don't know that I'm diabetic. Yeah. That's a pretty good excuse for not eating cotton yeah, candy. Sure okay. Is. All right. I'd be like, okay. I think what happened, I used to think maybe it made you hyper, but I actually think it puts me to sleep if I eat. If, I, if my blood sugar goes up, next thing I know, I'm looking for a nap. A couple of things about the, the music event. We're, we're inviting some of the local restaurants to participate, yeah. to sell food out to participants in the park. And we're going to have a liquor license. We'll be selling beer and wine. There you go. It's so everything you need, food and uh, some beer and wine at Mr. Pinstripe. Okay, thank well, you. Tommy's getting some shots of another great booth, a lot of booths. We didn't uh, visit everything at all. Here's a nice piece of furniture that was sold. I like that. It looks like, looks like maybe you keep some, I would have thought some uh, animals in there, but that thing's too nice and clean to put an animal in, so I don't know. What would I do with it? I don't know, but somebody's going to do something with it. They bought it for $100. That's looking pretty good. As you can see, it's nearly noon. Tommy's going to get ready to go and do the Four Fires event with Monique. And uh, we're going to say goodbye from the Plymouth Flea Market. And once again, I'm Tom Slavic. Tommy Fox is on camera, and we hope you enjoyed this outing on TSPN's Amador's Out and About.